Proverbs chapter 4. And uh, here's my bookmark. I'm looking at that. Um, the last time that we were here in uh, our priest, we got to do Proverbs chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 13. And today I'm going to finish that out, verses 13 through the end. And the first half of this chapter is talking about attaining wisdom. Well, where does all wisdom come from? All wisdom comes from God. And those that seek God diligently each and every day, He will help you avoid the potholes in the road. He will help you make better and wiser decisions. It helps you to stay out of trouble. The Word actually literally has healing power when people are sick. Why is that? Because Jesus Christ is the living Word. And the Word was with God from the very beginning. Uh, so there's really no excuse for anybody not to have some sort of a knowledge of God's Word because we've had it since the beginning. The foundation of the world. Now, you know, when you obtain that wisdom, it gives you knowledge, it gives you understanding, it gives you strength, mercy, it gives you blessings, it gives you uh, the riches of the Holy Spirit of God. I mean, there's not, it's all inclusive. There's not one thing in there that it cannot help you to instruct in how to live your life successfully today. Um, and, you know, if, if people would, would get in this Word and, and they're having a bad time and they don't think their life's that good, well, you better be taking a good, hard look at yourself. Because there is absolutely no reason for it. That's right. There is no reason for it. You might have had a bad start, but that don't mean you've got to have a bad finish. No matter what circumstances you were raised in, don't blame it on, well, my parents were mean and this, that, and the other. Hey, you answer for yourself That's right. with God. You stand before judgment. But you can have a better life if you will just dig into God's Word. So we were talking about the blessings and, and, and uh, inclining our ears to, to wisdom, which comes from God's Word. But it's also paying attention. There's people in my business that know more about it than I do. And if I hear them say something I don't know, my ears perk up. Yep. Because a wise person will continue to seek wisdom from somebody else that's wiser than them. Amen. But now a fool, they've got it all figured out. That's right. They're all puffed up. they got all the answers and they don't need God. So that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit today. In this last part, he's going to dress down those that do not seek wisdom, that do not obey His commandments, and then at the very end of this, it'll talk about those that do once again. Alright, so, uh, chapter 4, verse 13. Take fast hold of instruction. What instructions? God's instructions, folks. God's instructions. You want to know how to do something to be successful at it? Go to God's Word and seek His instructions. Right. If you want to have a successful business, go to God's words and it'll give you instructions. There's nothing in this Bible that's not in here. Let her not go, keep her, for she is uh, thy life. All right, I've already done 13 last week, so now 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Folk, what is a path? It is the journey, it is a way, it is the path that you are traveling today, and it says, Do not walk with the wicked. All right, and go not in the way of evil men. Amen. Now there's several verses that I can throw in to, to back this up. Matthew 7, uh, 13 and 14 it says, Enter you in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction. And many there be that go in. Did you hear that? Many there be that will go into destruction and into the lake of fire. Why? Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto eternal life. And few there be that go in there. Amen. And that's sad. Out of billions and billions of people on this earth, so many will follow the wicked all the way to hell. Um, Deuteronomy 30 19. God's given us a choice. We have free will. You set your own course. Deuteronomy 30 19 says, I have called heaven and earth to record this day against you. I have set before you life and death, blessings and and cursings, I would though you choose life so that thou and thou seed may live. 
It's no excuse for somebody blaming their parents for their raising. No excuse for blaming God for what's going on in your life. He gave you free will. Amen. And when you are old enough to accept accountability, you are setting your own course. That's right. You can either obtain wisdom from God's Word and have a relationship with Him and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and have eternal life. Or you can go the other way and have all the joys they think the joys of this life and drinking and running around and partying and carrying on and, and thieving and stealing and doing whatever it is. Go straight to hell. It's a choice. And God gives us all a choice. Psalms 91, verse 11 and 12, He says, I will give angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Lest thou dash thy foot against the stone, they shall bear thee up in their hands. There's the way again. Now, if you want one of the rewards of spending time with God and spending time in His Word, getting up each and every day and trying to do what is right Amen. and spread some kindness in the world, when you do that, when you're out into the world, you're not by yourself. You've got the Holy Spirit of God within you. But it says He gives you angels that are charged over you to protect you. Now those who want to live the ways of the world, they are on their own. But I'm sure Satan and his evil spirits and devils and demons they're having a field day with those folks. But guess who they're after? They're after you. That's right. They're after you because you love the Lord. So we've got to have our spiritual armor on and we've got to stay on the path that God has placed us on. Psalms 19, 105 says, The Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my way. It helps you avoid the stumbling blocks that Satan throws before you. And again, it lights your way. What way? The path that God has placed you on. Again, a choice that we, we take for ourselves. If you were to read from Proverbs chapter 1, verse 1, all the way through the end of this chapter we're doing today, uh, folks, and, and you practice it in your life, you'll be blessed. If you do those four chapters right there in Proverbs, you'll be blessed by following God's instructions. <clears throat> verse 15. Now God's going to tell you how to. It says, avoid it. How many times you get yourself in trouble when you see what you're doing in your life? I don't care if it's your past when you was a kid, teenager. You knew what the consequences were. You knew that you were going to get in trouble, and you did it anyway. Uh -huh. So how did he say it to avoid the wicked? He said, avoid it. Pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. How do you avoid it? Well, I'll give you a perfect example. I used to drink. I used to drink it quite a bit. Loved it. Loved the taste of alcohol. Too much. So I had to get away from it. Well, anybody that drinks or, or has had drunk in the past, you know you got your own little favorite watering hole, I call it. You know, you pass by it every day, boy, they just say, well, I don't know I don't need to do that, but man, there it is. I love going in there and talking to them, making a good excuse for myself to drink. So how do I avoid it? Go one minute out of your way and take a different dead gun road around it. Yep. Stay away from it. Avoid it. Don't be tempted by it. You know what your weakness is, but what's worse than that is Satan knows what your weakness is. Right. So you stay away from whatever it is. If hanging around somebody's bringing you down in each and every day, avoid them. If somebody's causing you to get in trouble that you hang around, avoid them. I always know that somebody, when I'm doing a jail ministry, I know that if they're ready to change or not because I say, hey, you can't hang around these people no more or you're never going to get your life right. Well, I just can't do that. I think that I don't want to feel like they're, I'm judging them. They're not ready. I'm sorry you can't hang around the same people that you were running around doing drugs with, smoking dope, whatever it is you're getting yep. into. You can't do it. You can't keep hanging around. Well, I want to try to say that you ain't strong enough to save yourself. How are you going to save somebody else? Come on. You can't do it. Woo! Verse 10. Alright. Verse 16. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause someone to fall. Why in the world would you follow a fool? Because it's just going to lead to destruction and heartache and sadness and stress 
and regret. You sing it, sister. But the people who are doing wicked, they lay awake at night thinking of ways to rip people off in the world today. That's how they get their jollies. Verse 17, For they eat the bread of the wicked and drink the wine of violence. It's Corinthians 10.21, it says, You cannot drink out of the cup of devils and drink out of the cup of the Lord. You right. cannot partake of the Lord's table and partake of the devil. That's right. I can't help but make this comparison because it's so bad and going on today that people come to church and they worship God and then they go outside the church and they live like a devil. It does not work. You cannot do it. You're kidding yourself. You're deceiving yourself. Not to mention that you are misrepresenting God when you do those things. You cannot drink of the cup of devils and drink of the cup of the Lord, folks. The two don't mix. Sweet and bitter water do not come out of the same fountain. It just doesn't happen. <clears throat> Verse 18. But the path of the just is as a shining light. Man, you know what? Even with troubles, we've got that peace. No matter what happens, you be like a duck and let the water roll right off your back. It's just another day. And God is walking with you. You shouldn't be worrying. You shouldn't be stressing. Because what does worry do? It does not add one thing to your life. But it takes it away, doesn't it? Yep. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. And what is the perfect day? It is the Lord's day. The return of Jesus Christ. Come, sweet Jesus, come. And then everything that you've been through in your life will seem like it was absolutely nothing compared to the glory of God and eternity in heaven. Hallelujah. You're going to be thinking back to yourself, why was I so worried? Why was I so depressed? Why was I so stressed? That is the main goal for us today. Is to continue to get up each and every day and try I have a lot of people tell me all the time, so brother, I get up and I, and I fall short in this and they, they, they feel bad and they feel sorry. I said, look, God cares and loves it the fact that you care enough to get up and try to do better. Is that not what we're supposed to do? Yep. We all fall short. We all sin because we're all sinners. Daily. But you can spend time with God. You can go to church. You can read your Bibles and you can be in prayer. And you can get up each and every day and try to do a little bit better. Can I get an amen? amen. <clears throat> but the path of the just is at the shining light and the shine more and more again unto the perfect day. And then 1 John 5 says uh, that the God is the light and there is no darkness in Him, folks. Amen. <clears throat> Verse 19. The way of the wicked is as darkness and they know not what they stumble. You know what? I don't know what your life, I know what some of your experiences are, but I don't know what all your experiences are. Um, but I can tell you personally for myself, you know, you, you, you get to a point when you're walking with God and you're spending a lot of time with Him now. I'm talking about being in your Bibles each and every day, trying to do what's right, praise and worship God, go to church, go to Bible study. And you feel like you're on top of the mountain. I mean, everything's going good, your family's good, your family's healthy, your business is good, everything's great. And I remember a time in my life where I poked the bear and I say I poked Satan because I thought, man, I'm untouchable. I'm up here, right up here. Can't nothing touch me. I got God. I worship. I praise. I pray. I study the Word of God. You can't touch me. Have you ever seen a hairline crack in the concrete? Yeah. You ever seen a crack on sheetrock? Yeah. I mean, just a little old fine line right up there? That's all it takes. That's it. You entertain something that is bad and wrong that Satan knows that he can get you for. Yep. So don't think you're invincible because Satan is powerful. So you've always got to be mindful and aware. When you see that little crack, don't open it. Because he will knock you flat on your back. And my point to you is, I went from that to a place that I was so dark I hit rock bottom before I finally saw the light again. And I, I mean, to this day, I can't believe that it happened to me. So, I've learned a lesson. 
I learned a valuable lesson with that. You have, yes, be in your word, be in prayer, but don't think Satan can't get to you because he can. And you've got to be on guard for that. Quit dwelling in the darkness and come into the light. Man, it's so much more fun in the light. You know, we think when we're down, we're down in the darkness, we think everything's great and everything's fine, but we have lost our way, folks. And it is so easy in this life to do if you're not very careful. Verse, nine, uh, verse 20, My son, now he's instructing the, the righteous again, My son, attend to my words. What words? This. The holy word of God. Incline thine ears unto my sayings. When you hear the word of God being spoken, you ought to be like a dog when he hears a whistle and his ears perk up and he faces to where the knowledge is coming from, which is in the word of God. Amen. Don't seek counsel from a fool. Seek counsel from Almighty God. Verse 21, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, which can also be translated into mind. You've got to put what you learn from God into action. Now, a lot of people say, well, brother, I don't have to do no works. I don't have to do nothing. I'm saved by grace. Well, I got news for you. You might get your foot in the door. You might make it through that door, but God will not be happy with you. Why? Because you have been given a beautiful, beautiful gift of eternal life. And you ain't going to go ahead and share it with one person. Right? And we've got to do better, don't we? We've got to reach our brothers and sisters who are lost in the world today. But James 1.22 says, But be ye doers of the Word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So if you take the instructions from God and you apply it to your life, it is going to stick with you. You are going to have it in your heart. You're going to have it in your mind. And no man, and not Satan himself, can take that away from you. Amen. Yeah, you say it, sister. Boy, she's a voicing it out today. <clears throat> For they are life unto those that find them and health to their flesh. Eternal life, folks. 23, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. It is the source of life, folks. The relationship with God is the source of life and it is the life. Eternal life. Verse 24, Put away from thee a froward mouth, and a perverse lips put far from thee. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Man, our tongues can do so much damage. Oh, no. And how can it be of life and death? Because you're either going to profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you will have eternal life, or you will not, and your lips will profess the ways of the world that lead straight to hell. Matthew 12, 36. <clears throat> that, that verse is stuck, really stuck with me because I've always had a problem with driving, a little road rage, you know. And every sometimes somebody does something or somebody's in front of you and slowing you, hurts, you God, please get out of the way, you big dummy, get out of the way. And that verse says, 12, 36, Jesus Christ says, I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Everything that comes out of your mouth, you will be held accountable in the day of judgment, folks. Right. They say the tongue in the book of James, they, they compare it to that little small rudder. Have you ever seen a big old cruise ship? And it's got a little old rudder on it. That's your tongue. And it maneuvers and steers that big old boat. And I always say, boy, I tell you what, sometimes our tongue wags our body. And sometimes our tongues overload our butts. That's right. <laughs> Verse 25. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight forward to thee. Avoid the crooked paths. Avoid the crooked people. Discern, folks. How do you discern whether somebody, or you think somebody's good or they're bad? You don't have to really be around them too long and have a conversation with them to kind of get an idea about what kind of person they are. Do you know what I'm talking about? 
You've got to have spiritual discernment. You have to test them by their fruits. It's pretty simple, really. Especially when you've got a relationship with God. Verse 26. Ponder the path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Meditate. I know I say this all the time. I don't know if any of you do it. Me and Jerry, of course, when Lindsay was still with us and we had the baby, we'd have to get up an extra half hour, hour early every morning so that we could have peace and quiet and meditate and study our Bibles and be in prayer each and every day. That is so very, very important with your walk with God today. And it's also very, very important with your discernment in the world. Verse 27, Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Stay on the path that God has placed you on. Um, I'll never forget this verse, Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30, 21, and it says, Thine ears shall hear a word from behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it. For when you shall turn to the right hand, and when you shall turn to the left. That is the small, still voice of God speaking to you through the Holy Spirit that gives you and helps you to make the right decisions and judgments in your life. And I'll never forget that verse because I was in, you know, I don't like to talk to people. Sitting in McDonald's parking lot in my car, getting my food ready, and there's a lady over here. She's out. She's got her back turned to me. And I rolled down my window and said, "Hey, hey, hey, ma'am, you know." She never turned around. That that scripture was tattooed on her back of her neck. I thought, how profound. She cannot hear our words, but she could hear the words of the Lord whispering to her. Can I get an amen? amen. Everyone, please bow your heads.